If you want to be able to speak with confidence about your political beliefs on Twitter, you're going to need to understand some terms that are in discussion right now. One of them is liberalism. Most people have the basic understanding that the term liberal originally referred to those like Thomas Jefferson or John Locke, who wanted more liberty, and they believed in individual rights, and so they were called the classical liberals. But also there's this understanding that over time, a different group in the mid-20th century calling themselves conservatives embraced this classical liberalism. The progressives, those who wanted more statism, started calling themselves liberals, and so the terms switched. So that's taken for granted that you understand a little bit about the history. But now, in 2022, those who are in the conservative nationalist or national conservative movement are attempting to create an illiberal version of conservatism. And so they are often attacking the idea of liberalism. And when they do it now, they do it in light of the fact that there have been these multiple usages in the past. And I think what they're doing is sloppy because they will criticize liberalism. And when they do that, what they mean is they are criticizing those who believe in the Declaration of Independence and especially the idea of individual rights, that all men are equal in terms of under God and that they have certain inalienable rights. This is not compatible with the national conservative view on rights and on the purposes of government. You can find that out if you would just look at Yoram Hazoni's book, Conservatism, A Rediscovery. So they're going to criticize liberalism with an umbrella term. And the reason why they do that is because they think that the liberal progressives that you see today, the leftists, and the classical liberal constitutional conservatives share a set of premises. And so they're going to try to associate those two people with each other, and they're going to say, we are outside of that altogether. I would call these people neo-reactionaries, illiberal rightists or conservatives. So uh, here's an example, just uh, something that I've pointed out. This is something I put on Twitter. I said, dear traditionalists who criticize liberalism, you're being sloppy with that term. It's either unintentional or intentional. Therefore, either you should be more careful or you should be more honest. When you say liberalism, it's unclear whether what you refer to is progressivism or classical liberalism. As described in this article, and I link to something from Dr. Andrew Sandlin, he has an article called We Need More Liberals. So if classical liberalism is your intended target, just call it classical liberalism. It would be more honest to say so. I mean, you could say classical liberalism, the whole liberal tradition, including both the progressives and the classical liberals, if you wanted to say that. But from the point of view of those who embrace classical liberalism, like I do, the idea of associating us with the progressives is nonsense. It may be true that both of us take as essential to our political views, foundational to our political views, some ideas, some propositions. And we believe that there are universal truths about human rights. But the fact that we both agree to that is not enough to distinguish us from any other views, because after all, even the traditionalists are going to, if you analyze their view enough, they're going to say that they also hold to some universal truths. And so it's not an important enough differentiation. And what you're doing is purposely packaging together two groups that are on the opposite side of the issue for a rhetorical purpose. It's not honest. And so I, I tell them, if liberalism is your intended target, it would be honest to say so. If it's not, please be more careful. And I recommend this article from Dr. Sandlin, We Need More Liberals. I'll just summarize a couple of points from it. So he talks about how when he was young, they would refer to themselves, perhaps in the 1970s, people would refer to the left-leaning people as liberals. But that's just an old way of thinking about that, that term. It's sort of outmoded at this point. The term liberal is now very ambiguous as far as what it could refer to. He says something strange happened on the way to the 21st century. Almost nobody on the left uses the self-referential term liberal anymore. And so now they've rehabilitated the term progressive. And I think he's right that probably the reason why the leftist progressives abandoned the term liberal is because it sounds too much like liberty, and liberty has nothing to do with their platform. Further into his article, Dr. Sandlin writes, Today's common good conservatives see the state's chief interest in maintaining a strong, virtuous national consensus. In this, they're drifting away from the American political philosophy of classical liberalism 
and toward the older European political philosophy of strong national purpose. I agree. Now, he says to refer to this European move as Christian nationalism in America is particularly ironic. So he has a lot to say. That I think it's important. Just go ahead and check out his article, We Need More Liberals, and see what he's saying and how he argues his case. The distinguishing position that Dr. Sandlin is arguing for when he says that he's in favor of classical liberalism, is he says that there is a single positive role for the state. This is what he writes. Classical liberals view the role of the state as mostly negative and positive in one chief sense. It's not supposed to do a whole lot of things. It's supposed to do one main thing, protect liberty, individual liberty. In the U.S. Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson memorably put it this way, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Go ahead and check out the rest of his article. But he is pointing out that these principles, if you want to reject them, go ahead and say so very clearly. Differentiate yourself from the tradition of American conservatism that used to actually uphold those principles. And be clear in your terms. When you call yourself a conservative, be open about the fact that you are a, a Tory an old-world European conservative and not an American one. We'll have more to say about this as time goes on. Thank you, Dr. Sandlin, for that article. Talk to you soon. God bless.